no acute uh, cases and uh, it's very important so i have few cases for everyone to understand about how uh, homeopathy will help in such acute cases so let's uh, let's begin just a minute Okay, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, and uh, so there are a few cases which I have, and these are like uh, very common cases. It seems very you know easy for everyone to uh, say that diarrhea was there, or coryza was there, or fever was there, or urine infection was there. But when they come to homeopaths. and when you are struggling uh, to give something which is acute which is which is you know uh, very uh, you know sh short acting and uh, you know to the point uh, it is it is really important that we cover all these specific symptoms and pqrs symptoms of the patient so long back when i started my practice uh, at a certain date which i mentioned uh, around in 2012 i was called to see a case who was having severe loose motions and it started with you know simple loose motions like diarrhea and then she started the patient started passing pure blood after around 7 to 8 stool, uh, stools that she passed from morning till night she had passed almost 20 times pure blood now this is a case where we you know struggle because there are so many medicines which will help in this case but we need to know what is peculiar to this patient of diarrhea of uh, loose stools and that is where our individualization lies so the case goes as follows there was some uh, intake of uh, oily food it is a puri which is prepared in india and they had some uh, oily food and the diarrhea had passed in a small quantity and uh, it was you know uh, watery and bloody and mucus was there lot of mucus was there so uh, there was lot of pain and pain in the abdomen as well as in the anus before the stools and also during the stools and what happened after the stools she used to pass she was not feeling better there was more aggravation in the abdomen in the anal region and there was lot of weakness which is very obvious if if you pass pure blood after two three episodes you will you will yourself feel the change even in 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 fact after a slight uh, a diarrhea which uh, you will face it will uh, it will always weaken you you know three to four episodes and the patient also vomited once but there was no nausea sensation thirst was not specific appetite was not much so you know you know we repertorize what is individualistic to the case and i used to use bogart synoptic key back then which is you know having uh, very basic symptoms to the point precise and you know you can reach the remedy faster so the stool bloody is one of the rubrics stool scanty but frequent the frequency of the stool this this was another interesting rubric stool mucus as well as bloody and concomitants during stool and after stool and there was ineffectual urging the patient had to go again and again and again there was no relief 
so we have a few remedies coming up you can see murk or murk naxomica phosphorus sulfur now in this way we see that we have to individualize the we have already individualized the case but we need something which is more specific to help us understand what we need to prescribe and when when i ask the patient little bit more about what is happening can you tell little bit more there were two main drugs coming merk cor and naxomica now how do we differentiate these two drugs so by the knowledge of materia medica we know that nux vomica is temporarily better by students so when you go to different different materia medicas you will see that nux vomica feels slightly better after passing the students and nux vomica patient will tell that after i passed that stool i felt better of course it was only for 30 minutes or 1 hour or 2 hours but i felt better whereas in this case the patient didn't feel better at all and there was so much passing of pure blood that it needed something which is matching that state of the patient and when we see something which is known as merk core from the bogor synoptic key this has a never get done feeling continuous urging to stool and urine scanty bloody stool shreddy or slimy stools and there is tormenting tenesmus you can see tormenting tenesmus which means that you are compelled to go again and again and again and the fourth line which is mentioned is passes pure blood or bloody water so that combination of what we see in the remedy also has to be there in the patient or vice versa what we see in the patient has to be exactly present in our materia medica and it is there in the materia medica it is present somewhere in materia medica if you are new to homeopathy if you are uh, someone who is you know taking uh, you know homeopathy as a as a new comer to homeopathy uh, as a patient then it's our strong recommendation that you give as much detail symptoms as possible so that the the case for the homeopath becomes very uh, understandable and we have the details to match the same remedy symptoms in our books in our literature because there are hundreds of medicines which will work on this condition there are many remedies which have bloody stools but if we get what is characteristically happening with you then we are bang on point to help you more better and more faster so finally i selected merk core and 200 potency and i gave it every half hourly so apart from selecting the remedy we also need to select the pace of the uh, repetition and this pace of repetition is very important because that situation needs your vitality to come under control it needs a reaction which is immediate and sudden and fast and also anemen says in this regard that the cure should be fast gentle and uh, rapid so every half hourly the merk core medicine was given in 200 potency and by the uh, next uh, follow up i could see that she had very normal stools no blood passed also patient vomited once but she was looking much better and she was in a position to reply otherwise in such cases they directly admit you to a hospital they put some uh, hydrating drips they give some antibiotics and within a day you run up a bill of thousands of rupees and you have yourself injected with 
lots of antibiotics or lots of medicines which are harmful to your body so this uh, individualization and this exactness is important again another case now this was a case which was nearly similar to what happened in the past in the past case and it is uh, by uh, you know this patient who had di developed diarrhea and they had also eaten uh, somewhere out in a subsequent uh, uh, you know uh, function which they had a festival they had in their uh, society in their apartment and there was lot of you know diarrhea since morning and there was rumbling in the abdomen it was as if something is moving 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 and then there was urge to pass the stools the stools were initially large but later on became scanty and there was sudden pressure in the abdomen and then there was rumbling as if something is moving like a ball and then the urge to pass the stools so this process which the patient describes is so important it helps the homeopath to understand the exact match of the medicine from the materia medica after eating or drinking anything they they wanted to hydrate themselves by taking water or any oral rehydration salts there was sudden diarrhea there used to be sudden vomiting and the rumbling did not get better after stools but it became worse and one of the interesting thing was that the wife of this patient was 7 month pregnant and was also exhausted after 10 to 12 episodes of stools and also she could at least just answer the questionnaire by opening her eyes what happened further was i just took three rubrics stool gushing pouring stool drinking aggravates and diarrhea eating aggravates and you can see croton tick arsenic podophyllum aloes china are coming this was again from burger synoptic key because it gives you precise rubrics what patient mentions as the words and we see the exact words in our uh, repertorial language and when you take little bit of more rubrics which is from generalities conditions eating aggravate or drinking aggravates and swashing splashing as of a water and there was a violent effect imagine you take food and after 6 to 8 hours you need to go to stools sometimes even immediately after taking the food it is a violent effect and it does not happen once but it happens twice thrice four times six times immediately after taking food it's a violent effect so you see there is a remedy arsenic there is a remedy nakswamika there is a remedy belladonna and so on which comes in your uh, literature in the repertorial language so i could have easily given arsenic or arsenic considering the prostration there was lot of weakness i could barely see her opening her eyes and talking about her symptoms but there was lot of thirstlessness and absent of perspiration you know there needs to be cold perspiration which veratrum album will give you and also nux vomica was an easy choice but considering nux arsenic and veratrum are you know prescribed routinely to many of such cases i i didn't want to be a routine prescriber i saw some some uh, you know uniqueness in the case which was the rumbling after eating there was some process going on in the abdomen which caused a rumbling and then it caused some stools so when i see this as a process and i match that in the remedy in the materia medica i see the medicine coming as croton tiglium i gave 30 potency two doses after half hour gap and followed with uh, placebo also 
and the wife immediately felt better and need not take the second dose of proton so the patient was not much well there were two cases which i was seeing simultaneously the husband and the wife so i just held on to the remedy and i told him to continue proton so many a times we are so much compelled to change the medicine if the patient is not improving we feel that we should change the medicine and uh, you know give relief with another medicine but if your totality is matching if your individual symptoms are matching to that remedy from the materia medica from the repertorial languages then you can definitely and surely continue with the same medicine and also by evening i could see that there was no vomiting and also two episodes of stools and the patient continued the same medicine and by next morning both of them were well so this was the you know the third day of the prescription many a time such patients get admitted to a hospital and they are not well after 2 to 3 days also they are given uh, medicines to uh, you know stop the discharge from the gastric mucosa so that it it uh, stops the discharges the, the diarrhea the stools so if you remember you know few aphorisms which our hanuman uh, has laid down in the organon of medicine to not prescribe uh, our favorite remedies which easily could have been in this case arsenic or uh, veratrum or naxomica which we have usually prescribed usually prescribed in diarrhea cases we should not see that there are any surrogates in homeopathy so what it means is that you do not have a substitute there has to be a specific remedy for each case then we are on the track to cure the patient to help the patient another case of coryza now it may seem very simple these cases but what happens is that these are the bread and butter of homeopath these are the cases which will give you instant results and and give you the push which is needed to uh, cure your patients immediately rather than waiting for 6 to 8 months or few years in a chronic case so this case of uh, you know coryza uh, which i i i could uh, i could see she was a 30 year old lady and i was treating her for uh, chronically for uh, acute coryza uh, and cough which uh, happened on and off and her chronic remedy was costicum and intercurrently she was being given sorainum after which her recurrent upper respiratory tract infections reduced but one day she came up with a peculiar sensation this was a sensation in her chest and throat she felt as if she is held by something and there was a stuck up sensation there was heaviness in the chest the throat felt mildly better by intake of warm drinks by the least draft of air she used to feel difficulty in breathing there was nose block uh, in the early morning which was not better by anything and there was cough which got ameliorated by vomiting but you know it was uh, thick and slimy also she told me one interesting thing and this was out of the blue and because she was a patient of homeopathic medicine since a long time she could tell me that she has this interesting symptom of perspiration since many days since many days she was having lot of perspiration which was all over the body and she told me she shares with me this symptom because she knows everything is important so when our homeopathic patients are educated about about how they should give the case about what details they need to mention to us from the hair to the tip of the toe 
whatever else is happening in the disturbed state, then the homeopath can reach the right remedy. It may take one or two minutes more in acute cases and few minutes in chronic case taking to give these symptoms. But it is very helpful for a homeopath to reach the right remedy and to cure everyone immediately and as fast as possible. When I examined this patient of you know suffocation and there was a lot of uh, perspiration and uh, she she told me that uh, there was uh, you know when I checked her I didn't find anything which was uh, of of uh, any uh, botheration. The chest was clear. And she told me that she had traveled somewhere around and uh, in in a in a in a train, and because of that there was a lot of uh, swelling in her ankle. And she told me that it never happened before when she had always traveled. So this became very peculiar: the coriza, the suffocation in the chest, in the throat, the perspiration, the ankle swelling. So when you just take these few rubrics. Respiration difficult, perspiration with swelling ankles and obstruction of the nose. You come to many remedies arsenic, sulfur, lachesis, cactus, kali's carp, lycopol, sambucus, sepia, silicia, scuprum. The list is endless. The list is endless. When you combine, uh, you know, uh, something which is very interesting in this case. you see that there is there are many remedies coming up there were there were arsenic there is sulfur there is sorinum there is apis there is kalika lyco sepia i could have thought of arsenic for its suffocation and operation or kalika for perspiration and respiratory distress or lyco for warm drinks ameliorate of the throat but what i thought was i saw something unique remedy in the in the entire entire a reportization in the remedy chart, which was Sambucus. And when I opened Sambucus from Bogar Synoptic Key, I saw that there is a symptom which is mentioned, sweats or gets short of breath with many symptoms. Sudden suffocation or strangling cough on falling to sleep or waking him after midnight with violent sweat aggravation from fright. And you can see spasm of the glottis which is why she felt the, the suffocation in the chest, in the throat. And you can also see there is uh, some dropsy and it has affinity for the ankles where there is, you know, swelling of the ankles. So the remedy prescribed was Sambucus. And with Sambucus, three to four doses throughout the day, by the next morning, she was much better. She got immediate relief and it was a miracle. I mean, she told me that I don't think so allopathic medicine or old school medicine or any other medicine would have helped her so faster than what your medicine did. And since she was a patient already taking medicine for acute upper respiratory tract infection, the medicine worked really faster. So when patients are taking homeopathic medicines from us, and when they land up in acute situation and when they want to take homeopathic medicine for acute medicines all for acute conditions also they heal much faster than the other medicines that they take agree i agree so i i i think uh, this was you know in short, about do you uh, want me to wrap up? What? Do you want me to finish off? Ah, no, no. Okay. So there is one more case I want to share. And this is an interesting case of urinary tract infection. Let me come to it. So... Okay. So this is a case of uh, urinary tract infection and this
this lady had been coming to me for uh, uh, many joint complaints polyarthritis and pedal edema which is swelling in the legs and she reported to me on one evening just before i was closing my clinic with lot of pain in the urethra and it started from the morn the afternoon of that day same day and she told me that after urination it was much bad much worse she didn't uh, you know uh, felt comfortable and she was around more than 50 year old she is around 55 or 57 she is very fat and very uh, obese so when i see the acute totality of in evolution for this case i could see that there was some characteristic symptom which is pain in the urethra after urination and especially the modality the time modality which is 3 pm onwards and she had to go to frequently pass the urine because you know she was getting the urge there must be some infection so i just repertorized quickly because there were not many symptoms available and i could come to one remedy which is thuja this has exact 3 pm aggravation which is afternoon modality so i i thought of giving her thuja severe cutting after urination frequent micturition accompanying pains this is mentioned in boric materia medica and sudden and frequent urging which cannot be controlled the other remedies which are nearly similar are sarsa parella clematis pulsatilla petroselinium but the time modality was very very important so i told her to take thuja one is at that same evening on at 10 pm one is the next day uh, in the evening 5 pm just after her aggravation time and another was another evening next evening 8 pm and i also prescribed her uh, placebo because uh, i i thought i would get her investigated to understand what the situation is and the frequent repetition over here was avoided for tuja because i wanted to know what's happening inside from the urine report so before i could get the urine report she reported to me that she couldn't go because of some some reason and she felt slightly better so she avoided so i told that okay we'll wait for one more day and we'll see if you are feeling better we'll we'll still wait and see what uh, happens with the medicine she told that she is feeling better but uh, she has uh, complaints after urination and there is lot of heaviness in the abdomen and pain in the urethra so i again uh, told her that i'll reassess i i told her i'll reassess and when i reassessed what i reassessed the case so i reanalyzed it means it means that i took the symptoms again afresh and on on the third day of the prescription of thuja she told me that she has heaviness in the hypogastric region there is heaviness uh, and as if there is a pain frequently she has to go to pass urine and it does not go in a good stream but it dribbles slowly slowly in few drops and there is severe pain in the urethra exactly as i finish as i am about to finish my urine and she told that she had this past history of uh, complaints with uh, urinary tract infection similarly so in the meanwhile 
I got her investigated because I told her that we can't proceed unless we get to know what's happening inside. Is there anything worse, uh, or is it okay, or is it better, or is it nothing? And when we got her investigation, it was showing one eighty to two hundred pus cells. This is the maximum number I I ever saw in a urine routine report from a homeopathic uh, OPD. So when I reassessed her case, I took her fresh totality. I saw that there was a lot of heaviness in the hypogastrium, which is the part just below the abdomen. There was a lot of tenesmus, which means that she has to go frequently for urine, and there was a lot of painful urging. There was pain in the urinary meatus, urethra meatus, the point of uh, exit of urine after the urine. and there was lot of urging to urinate morbid desire so there are a few remedies coming up now pulsatilla cantharis cannabis sativa lilium tigrinum natrum ur capsicum uh, cubeba borax sarsaparilla these all are common remedies for urinary symptoms but what i asked her was what is that feeling you have when you complete your urination and she told me that there is a, there is a kind of a spasm exactly as i finish the urine so i opened this interesting repository which we have easy yaga repository and i took two rubrics which is cystitis bladder pain at the neck of the bladder at the close of urination and also cystitis bladder pain spasmodic neck at the closure of and we get three close remedies which is pulsatilla cannabis sativa and sarsaparilla so i wanted to confirm which is the remedy which exactly matches this particular totality which this particular symptom and i i could come up to cannabis sativa urine scalding with spasmodic closure of sphincter so i made a search in the in the reference library of the software urine spasm sphincter urine within three words of spasm within three words of sphincter and i could reach a few remedies out of which cannabis sativa was the most important and showing exact symptom spasmodic contraction of sphincter at the close of urine so i prescribed her cannabis sativa 200 every two hourly for the next five days six days and then tapered off to thrice a day four times or twice a day and at the end of 10 days of her treatment she felt better 10% on each day then we got her investigated on the 11th of april 2012 this was showing 15 to 20 pus cells so in this way if we have the exact symptom of the patient we can reach the right remedy so i think uh, this gives you a fair idea of how acute care in homeopathy works we need not only the uh, details from the patient but also uh, we need not only the symptoms of patient suffering of the chief complaint but we also need something which is happening apart from the main symptom like in one of the cases we saw perspiration in one of the cases we saw uh, you know a uh, lot of rumbling with the diarrhea patient will come and complain of one symptom but if there is something additionally happening with that if they share about that as well it would be more beneficial for the homeopathic doctor to you know take your case prescribe a remedy which matches this symptom and i am thankful to genovia for organizing such a beautiful uh, webinar for uh, all class of people and uh, it's a good initiative i i would urge everyone to uh, donate some funds for uh, helping the uh, ukraine people who are much suffering right now 
and thank you uh, Alpesh, was, for 